Scott Wilson is a god amongst men. And one of the great big attractions for me coming to this show was to work with him. You know, he's a legend. He's not only a great actor, but he's a wonderful man. He has so many stories. And he's so kind and he's so funny and he's so supportive. We're just going to miss him so much here uh, in the, the Walking Dead family. He's awesome and I'm fortunate to have spent time in his presence. Godspeed, baby. The best movie dad you could ever ask for. Um, a friend. Gone from The Walking Dead, but not gone from all of our family. Flu Scots was especially hard. We all kind of started together as a family unit. You get really close to people. It's so scary. You know what to do. Please welcome Scott Wilson. Oh yeah. Keep it going. I told you. Welcome. Good. The, good. The microphone's for you right on the table. There's some water for you. Let's try that again. Scott Wilson, everyone. There you go. Is it, on, uh, is it on? Oh, good. Good, thanks. Cool. It's great to be in Pittsburgh. Cool. It's, it's so nice to have you. Uh, Want to jump right to the questions or say a few things? It's just wonderful to have you. I heard some of that. What a great group of people I had to work with here. They were, you know, the cast, the crew, and Greg Nicotero, I think, is from Pittsburgh, too. He does the special, you know, specs, as you probably all know. But it's, I spoke to him yesterday. So, again, it's good to be here. Do any of you have any question? Or is this it? <laughs> First question. Um, I've got to ask you, looking at this room full of people, did you ever expect the fandom when you signed on to do, you know, this kind of fever that people have. No, I don't, I don't think you could anticipate that. It's like catching lightning in a jug. I mean, the, there are a lot of wonderful shows on television and a lot of wonderful movies that have been made that the audience never really latched onto. It. So it, it's the audience made the show as much as the show making itself. You people that make it go. I have no idea. We have a couple questions over here for you. Um, what was it like to have cast members that were friends, almost like family to you? Really, the whole the whole environment working on the show was like an extended family. Not just the actors, but the crew, the people behind the cameras, and even the walkers, the people that were playing the walkers. They they worked as hard as anyone else. They were always focused. They were always into, into their character and to play the zombies, and that made it easier for the actors to uh, buy into where they were. So it's, I think there were a lot of life lessons in, in that show. So, you know, it, and, and I think going through life, there are times when you are separated from people, like when you graduate from high school or when you graduate from some other place or some group that you're with. You carry their memories with you for the rest of your life. So it's a lot like that with, with the mind. Another question for you here. Do you and the cast members of The Walking Dead still have Spaghetti Tuesdays on Wednesdays? <laughs> I know that there's some people that would like to. <laughs> I don't. That was, uh, that line got a lot of play. <laughs> it, it was a fun line to, to, to have. And it, it was, I would say it was partially improvised. Like, Part of that line. They said spaghetti, and we'll have uh, spaghetti. Here, I have spaghetti Tuesday. 
And then when we were shooting, I said Spaghetti Tuesdays every Wednesday. So it was, I just thought we needed a, a sure lap, and I thought that might do it. Scott, over here to your left, we've got a question all the way over here. I'd like to know, how soon do you know when your character is going to meet its demise in the show? I think for different people it was different times. With me, I got suspicious. Uh, <laughs> like the third episode of the fourth season, when they gave him, uh, they made him a very proactive character. He, he gets out and says, you step outside, you risk your life, you take a drink of water, you risk your life. And I said, this is not good. <laughs> and then the fifth episode, when Herschel goes into the prison trying to save the people that are dying in there, I said, this is it. This, it won't last much longer now because he was too proactive. And, and it was a wonderful way to go out because it, I had some great scenes and worked with some wonderful people. But you know, I knew it, and after we finished that episode, uh, Scott Gimple called me and he told me that, that he was taking me on the show. So two episodes later, I was out. But, but you know, I knew it was going to happen when I signed on to do the show. So it was a lot of fun doing it. Another question over this way. Everybody, first I want to know uh, your favorite scene to film, but I want to say what mine was of yours, and that was definitely your reaction to when Herschel called you a tough SOB. <laughs> the scene with uh, Norman when you come out of out of prison at, uh, uh, at the end of five. Yeah, that was a, that was a fun. I, mean, I, I think one of my favorite lines was uh, the Lord promised the resurrection of the dead. I just thought he had something a little different. <laughs> and that was, that was a, one of my f fun lines. I like that line too. You're a tough son of a bitch, yes, I am. I mean, that was fun. We've got a question over here for you. Um, two part question. One, uh, do you still keep track of the series? I do. And two, who do you think got uh, hit with the other end of the series? <laughs> Now, if I told you, to have to kill all of them. <laughs> and Herschel doesn't like to do that. <laughs> Over here, another question. Um, your character had such an influence on the series when you were there. Do you still feel that Herschel, his, his, his ghost is with them and, and helps Rick direct you know, where they're going and how they're going about what they do? I, I think that there's a residual impact I mean, his daughter's pregnant now. You know, there's there's uh, some really bad stuff going down now. <laughs> but uh, I think he had an influence that would probably stay there. They still talk about him. They still mention him. But it was uh, it was just a lot of fun working with all those guys. They were wonderful actors, and wonderful people. I have a question for you over here. Hi. What was it like to work with Norman Reedus? <laughs> it was it was a lot of fun to work with Norman Reedus. It was it's fun to hang out with Norman Reedus. He's he's really a great guy. With with all of the adulation that he gets and all of the the uh, the you know the acceptance that he gets. He's kept his feet on the ground and his head on his shoulders. And he's, he's really a great guy. Some questions over this way? What was it like filming in cold blood? <laughs> well, I was a young, young back then. Pardon? Sorry? Back to you. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you. Well, yeah. well I've been acting about five and a half years, and I 
I got my first film interview uh, five years later, and that was in the heat of the night. And that led to my being up for a cold blood. And I got a cold blood. And that was, for those of you who are too young to know, that was a very anticipated film when it came out. Uh, Truman Capote was, wrote a book that was redefined, you know, literature. It was really an exceptional book. And I ended up with one of the two lead roles in it. The two bad guys who killed the family before. And it was, I knew at that time that I was part of something that would last for a long time. And it has. I mean, it's, it's in the National Registry as one of the best films ever. And so is In the Heat of the Night, my first film. Uh, so is another film of mine, The Right Stuff, is in the National Registry. Right And I'd like to skip ahead to now. Uh, Damien, can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, that, that was fun. I remember when they were making that film, Damien. How, how many of you have seen The Omen? All right, cool. Well, I'm in a new show called Damien that is based on the old film, The Omen. And it's... Uh, I play a bad guy, <laughs> so be careful. I mean, but but uh, sounds like Damien's in the hall. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So so it it's uh, it plays it plays on Mondays. It'll play this Monday on A and E, and you know, tune in, see what you think. Maybe you know, maybe you like it. It's, uh, Got a question for you over here. What advice would uh, Herschel give to Rick in the group facing Negan? You know, I have wondered about that myself. What Herschel might say. I know, because I thought the episode back, so when they started taking actions, at one time it had been questions. And they, Took those actions. I, to me, I was sitting. I wonder what person would say. He, I think he would not have approved that. I, I don't know what he would. I'm not the writer, but I know my instinct says that he would disapprove of him going and taking unilateral action without having at least had more of a discussion and debate about it. But. That's it's, that's the show, and it's created the situation that you're that they're in now. So I think that's always been one of the elements of the show that you're going to question what some people are doing, and you're going to applaud it, and other people you're going to say they should not have done that. So your guess is as good as mine. Hey, we got a question for you over here. Do you get to keep any of your props, especially the animatronic head? I don't have the energy mind, but I do have a head. And it, it's in a little plastic box in my, my closet. And my wife won't let me take it out. <laughs> so it's it's uh, it's there though. I, I think that they left. I keep saying, let me see if my brains are there. <laughs> Question for you over here. Um, how did you react to the whole Glenn with the dumpster scene, the whole fake out thing? How did I react to it? Yeah, like, did you think they he fell was... down into the, into yeah. the walker? Probably it... like you did. <laughs> Question for you right here. This actually is two parts. First one, how did you react when you, um, for having your leg cut off in that one scene where you were bit in the leg? You know, that was an interesting day of shooting. Uh, when he got, got bit, it, it, all, uh, the rest of the cast, everyone that was involved in grabbing Herschel and rushing him down the hallway into the cafeteria. And it was like, 
it isn't in the same time that it looks like it is on the film. It's like all day long. You're doing that run down the hall all day long. And the energy level and the concentration, the focus of, of uh, the cast members that were dragging him down the hallway and bursting, bursting into the uh, cafeteria. And then seeing the other actors who were there behind the cell having to reenact that for them when they came in the next day. So it was really like two days of a bunch of actors really working very hard and putting everything they had into it. So I have a great deal of respect for all of them. Part two of his question. How did you react when you knew you were going to get killed by governor? Well, I didn't feel like anyone was going to swoop to my rescue. <laughs> but I, I, that, to me, that, that scene was very interesting because what we do is a collaborative medium. And everyone involved in it contributes in some way. Like the, the director, of course, the writers wrote the script. Uh, Ernest Dickerson, the director, I love the way he staged. The, the, uh, that scene, he had the tank pointing up at the prison, cars with heavy duty war toys on them, and hollering for Rick to come on down so they could talk. And you see him, Rick, walking down this hill with a six shooter on his hip, facing, facing the tank and all these heavy duty machines. <laughs> I said, this is like an old western where you're going to have a shootout in the middle of the street. <laughs> it was, to me, I, I, I got a big kick out. And when it came time to, uh, where they shot all of the other stuff, Ernest comes over and said, it's time for that smile. Well, that's when I knew they were going to be whacking, so it was very memorable that day was my last day on the set and all of the crew and the people working up in the buildings and the cast and everyone came to the set wearing Herschel clothes. <laughs> wearing suspenders and stuff like that. It always got me emotional. Okay. Another question for you over here. What is your go-to way to get into character? What is my go-to way for getting into character? Well, I think it depends on what the role is. First, you just try to familiarize yourself with the material, who you're playing, who the other characters are, and what they're doing, and how your character interacts with them. And then you might have some research you can do at times where you are you an actor? Okay. What? Where do you act? Well, good. You keep enjoying it. It's fun. But there's there's a lot of ways of approaching it. And and I guess when you get to be as old as me, you develop your own way. <laughs> Thank you. Good luck. Break a luck. We have a question for you over here to your left, way over here. In The Walking Dead, did you have a favorite cast member to work with? You know, I had a lot of favorite cast members, really. There wasn't one that I felt like I had worked with enough. There were a lot of them that I felt like I didn't have enough scenes with them. Because I really, really respected every one of them and, and it was sometimes I've worked on shows or a movie or something where you say you, you kind of grit your teeth a little bit when you know you're going to be working with someone but that didn't happen they're all, they're all good people got one for you over here it's a two-part question um, and on the walking dead would you feel that Hirsch would be more of a doting type of grandfather or Hardcore, you know, push your grandchild to be, you know, really strong and, and proactive like him. And the second question is, was it more of a challenge to play, play Herschel or Scott Crossfield in 
um, the right stuff. I'll start with the last part first. Uh, Scott Crossfield, if, if, if anyone doesn't know, was the first test pilot to go twice the speed of sound. The first test pilot to break the sound barrier was, was uh, Chuck, Chuck Yeager. And Scott Crossfield is also the first aeronautical engineer that was the test pilot when he designed the uniforms that the astronauts wore still wearing uh, as their uniforms. So it was a real privilege to play someone that had, had uh, done, he was a real American hero, so it was a privilege to play him. Uh, and the other part of your question was, uh, what? What kind of a grandfather would Herschel be? A doting one or a hardcore one? I think he would do what was necessary. <laughs> He would, he would be there to encourage him to help and to keep keep him from keep him out of mischief as well. Question for you right back here. Um, do you have a favorite role or character out of everyone that you've played? You know, at different times it's a different role. At different times it, it's because I've had kind of a blessed career to been involved in a lot of, with, and working with a lot of the people I've worked with. One unusual experience is I did a film based on a play that Carol Wojtyla wrote, who later became Pope John Paul II. And I had two audiences with him uh, when we shot the film. We had a screening for him at Castel Gandolfo in a summer residence outside Rome. That's kind of a life experience highlight. Uh, but, you know, you, you invest so much of yourself into the characters that you play that you, all of them become personal to you. All of, all of the roles become personal. Question for you back here. Um, so, I know you're, obviously your character in The Walking Dead is one of the good guys. Um, and your character in Damien is kind of a bad guy. Do you prefer to play good guys or bad guys? Oh, who's got the money? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is fun to play a bad guy, and I have played some real bad guys. And I've also played some real good guys, like the Pope's film. He actually canonized uh, Adam Mirolovsky, who was, was uh, an artist who came in contact with the homeless, and he gave up the world of art and became a monk, devoted the balance of his life to helping the homeless and the downtrodden. That was a lot of fun, and, and, and I felt significant. Uh, and playing a bad guy, I played a real bad guy in In Cold Blood that was mentioned earlier. Uh, and I know when I, I approached that role, I said, I don't want anyone to like this character at the end of the film. Because I don't want anyone trying to emulate, or wanting to emulate, what he did. So, I think, and, and then Herschel was certainly fun to create a, a character like him, who, who, uh, who was a good guy. I mean, he maybe, you know, had issues, had problems like most people do. But it's harder sometimes to take a good guy and make him interesting than it is to take a bad guy and make him bad. So, there's a big challenge to, to uh, playing a good guy. Another one over this side. How do you feel about the way the walk of the writers wrote uh, the finale of season the last season six, um, with the big cliffhanger. Do you think they cheated the fans? I, you know, I'm like you. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out together. We'll that decide if we're mad or not. <laughs> Young fan over here with a question. Are you afraid of Negan? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not on the show anymore. <laughs> Um, I was wondering, 
uh, out of all the cast members on the show that you've worked with on The Walking Dead, who is most like their character and who is least like their character? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, they, in reality, I think each of the characters that I worked with while I was there have exhibited really incredible grace under a lot of stress. And sometimes they played scenes that the audience they knew was not going to identify with them in, and they still did it to the best of their ability. So, I mean, gosh, I mean, you can play a bad person in, in earn my respect. You can do things that are not appropriate in a film and earn my respect because you stand up to what you have to do. But, but, uh, so I, it's really a tough question for me to answer. Over here. We all know that Fear the Walking Dead starts out as the apocalypse is happening. Given the chance, would you go on that show since it's before Herschel's death? I, I, I don't have to contemplate that. <laughs> I mean, I've seen, the sh I've seen not all of those episodes, but there's some really good actors in the show. So I hope I wish them success, you know, I, but I, I, have, I haven't even considered giving that a thought. There's another show that I'm working on now called The OA that'll play on Netflix and Britt Marlin, if you're familiar with Britt Marlin, uh, and Zell Betmongli is uh, are the writers and she's starring in and he's directing. That'll play on Netflix. Check that out. Got time for three more questions. Is that good? We're back in the middle here. When you were first getting into acting, who was your inspiration? Who did you look up to? Who did you really like look at and be like, oh, I want to be like that person? Well, it may sound strange, but I didn't start out really wanting to be an actor. Uh, I hitchhiked when I was 19 from my home state to uh, California, uh, from Georgia. And I got drunk and ended up in an acting club. <laughs> so, and I went back the next week to apologize to the teacher. And he gave me a monologue to do for Regina O'Neill, one act play called A Long Voyage Home. And I did it, and I said, this is what I want to do with my life. So, I got lucky to find that at that age. Uh, and, and then I wanted to become the best actor I could be. <coughs> Got a question for you back here? Uh, first, all of my friends want me to tell you that they love you and hello and thank you for coming here because you have a huge fan base. And my question is, how long did you keep the ponytail in the beard? <laughs> I kept it until I had to cut it. You know, I did, I did, uh, you know, I worked with Glenn Mazzara on Damien, and he was the showrunner on The Walking Dead. And so I was going to cut it all off there, and they wanted me to keep some of it. So I kept a little bit of the beard and mustache. Uh, and then when I did the OA, I'm, we're still shooting it. We're still shooting it in New York now. I had to cut the rest of it off. But I'm, I'll grow it back someday. It was fun. And that, and just, got, just, just as a point, talking about the beard and the mustache, between my first season, uh, which was season two of the show, and the next season that took place in the prison, I said um, to myself, I said, I'm not going to cut my hair. Because I had short hair the first, my first season. And then I said, I'm not going to cut my beard either. So I let it grow because I didn't know how much time would have passed between the end. <laughs> I mean, it really, and I said, hey, I can cut it off. There's no problem. No, 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 we like it. Because I thought, this is for the actress, young lady over here. 
I thought that that uh, that would show a t passage of time, really a visual passage of time that you didn't have to analyze. It just you, the audience would just absorb it and know they've been on the road for a while. So it it, it serves to you know that the picture's worth a thousand words, the moving picture's worth a million words. So you're trying to find ways to 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 uh, delineate who your character is in other ways other than just dialogue. So, so that was, uh, and, and I think it influenced the show. All right, we've got our last question right back here. Okay. Okay, so if you had to guess, who do you think put Sophia in the barn? I think it was Otis. <laughs> you know. No, I think I think it was Otis, and I don't think he had time to tell Rachel uh, that, that she was there because he immediately went to the, to the school, and Shane did the no-no on him. <laughs> but no, I think it was it most likely was Otis. Well, there you go. He's going to be headed back to his table. If you haven't had a chance for your question, go back. He's going to be back at his table signing autograph. Scott Wilson! Can't thank you enough for doing this. Cheers. Have a great night. An honor, sir. He'll be back at his table signing autographs and answering your questions. Don't forget his new series, Damien, is coming out. You can check that out. And coming up in less than a half hour, Mr. Anthony.